क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई क्रीडा Hello friends in the previous topic we have discussed about the balance bond theory and now in this topic we are going to talk about the limitations of balance bond theory so what are those limitations let me talk about that in this topic so friends in this topic i'm going to talk about the limitations of valence bond theory so starting with the first point that is what we have is valence bond theory is unable to explain the color of the complex we understand that is the complex have different color and depending upon the ligands it has different color but in this case of valence bond theory valence bond theory doesn't gives the explanation about why and which is the color of the complex so that is the biggest drawback of the valence bond theory and because we understand that is dd transition it occurs in the d block elements of the central metal ion but in that case also we can't predict whether which color it would be exhibiting because the colors that are been exhibited by the complex it depends upon the wavelength that are been absorbed by the metal ion or the wavelength that are been absorbed by the complex ions so that is not explained by valence bond theory so talking about the next point that is there is no explanation in valence bond theory for orbitals contribution to magnetic moment we understand that this the magnetic moment is because of the orbitals even they are to which basically they have electrons on it and even they are revolving around a particular nucleus or they are revolving around a particular atoms nucleus so in that case the valence bond theory doesn't gives a detail about the magnetic moment of the orbitals so so that is the biggest drawback so talking about the next point that is a metal ion with a particular oxidation state can have low spin and high spin complex so this is what it was not been explained by the valence bond theory so talking about the next point that is on basis of valence bond theory the correlation between the geometry and magnetic property cannot be explained so even that is a biggest drawback because we can understand a geometry but to understand the magnetic property that there is no correlation between the geometry and the magnetic property so it couldn't be explained with the help of valence bond theory so talking about the next point that is the valence bond theory does not provides the interpretation of the thermodynamic and kinetic stabilities of the complex because whenever it comes to the thermodynamic or whenever it comes to the kinetic stability of the complex we understand that is we should know a particular data related to the energy and related to that data which is about the energy we can make sure whether that complex is stable or not but in that case of valence bond theory that kind of energy level or that kind of detail is not been explained in the valence bond theory and hence we can't provide certain information whether the complex is stable or not thermodynamically or kinetically so talking about the next point that is valence bond theory cannot predict if a four coordinate complex will have a tetrahedral or square planar geometry so unless we do certain calculation or so unless we predict the central metal ions hybridization we cannot say whether what would be the geometry of the overall complex but in that case that is for vbt we cannot explain whether the four coordinate complex whether it would be tetrahedral so in that case valence bond theory fails to explain this point and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much